Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Dale Mulcahy, Matt Zaglin, the sponsor, Kelly Cook, and brand new patron Nigel. Well, everybody, welcome, Nigel. Hey, Nigel. Welcome, Nigel. On this episode of DTNS, how is TikTok dealing with the disappearance of UMG Music and its Apple Vision Pro launch day? So now we can stop speculating and, I don't know, maybe start seeing if it's good for anything. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, February 2nd, Groundhog Day 2024. Friday, February 2nd, Groundhog Day 2024 <laughs> in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Animal House, <laughs> I'm Sarah Lane. From the edge of Atlanta, I'm Nika Monford. Also from the suburbs of Atlanta, I am Terrence Gaines. Drawing the top tech stories in Cleveland, I'm Len Peralta. I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. And joining us, producer and co-host of the brand new Apple Vision show, starring Sarah Lane and Eileen Rivera. Welcome, Eileen. Hello. I have also been told that it is Groundhog Day. I don't know how many times on my phone, on the same calendar, like 10 times. It's That's Day. appropriate. Is anybody, this, yeah. Is yeah. this happening to anyone else? My I have not had that it's like a, Yeah, weird. I don't know. It's weird <laughs> That's wild. prophesizing meme. Indeed. Uh, well, we are obviously gathered such a big panel today uh, because we wanted uh, the folks from the brand new Apple Vision show, which launches Monday, to meet the folks from Snob OS Cast, uh, who are our in-house uh, Apple correspondents, uh, and talk about the big launch of the biggest product. Is it fair to say it's the biggest product Apple's launched since the iPhone? Oh, it's the it's one? certainly the biggest In anticipation, bets. anyway. Yeah. 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 Probably the one with the most questions, I would say. And the most the expensive. The Certainly the most expensive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, sure. what, like the, the Mac Pro would be the only thing that passes it up. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah, they're neck and neck. <laughs> Maybe yeah. the thing with the biggest box, I would assume. Yeah. A big <laughs> box, too. So we're going to talk about all that and more, but let's start with the quick hits. Meta earned a net income of $14 billion on revenue of $40.1 billion, with a whopping 96% of that from advertising. So Meta's still doing the advertising thing. That's up 25% in the quarter that ended December 31st, 2023. Meta's Metaverse biz, Reality Labs, saw $1 billion in revenue. That's up 47% year over year, which sounds pretty great but that was also against a net loss of $4.6 billion. Basically, Reality <laughs> Labs has never made money. Meta's other revenue accounted for $334 million. Did you see Zuckerberg was like, oh, and we're going to lose more money next quarter. Don't worry. Like, we're just going to keep <laughs> losing money on this. Just we're good at this. Yeah. yeah. Online. Uh, Google has removed links to the cached versions of web pages. You may have forgot that that was even there. They were originally launched to provide a way to access information when internet reliability from websites was lower. Like, websites might go down, but you could get the cached version. That's not that big of a problem anymore. Uh, but the cached version did some other things. It let you see the way Google's system saw a site. And so search engine optimization folks used it to understand how to construct their pages to improve rankings in Google, to kind of see how the competition was ranked in Google. And it could also show information that might be altered for your region, similar to using a VPN, because you're seeing how Google saw it in different regions. The cache links have been disappearing since December, and the cache operator that you can use in the address bar to make it show up is going to be discontinued soon. Now, archive.org is a good alternative if you want to see what's changed on web pages over time or see how it shows up in different areas, but there does not appear to be a replacement for seeing how Google views a page. Back in 2017, somebody leaked multiple terabytes of classified CIA data to WikiLeaks, known as Vault 7 and Vault 8. The documents detailed surveillance and cyber warfare activities, but were mostly instruction manuals for older hacking tools. So generally, at the time, not considered to be consequential. On Thursday, the U.S. Department of Justice announced that former CIA software engineer Joshua Adam Schulte has been sentenced to 40 years in prison for his convictions on charges of espionage, computer hacking, contempt of court, making false statements to the FBI, and child pornography. Yikes. Uh, reviews for the Samsung Galaxy S24 are out. Uh, <laughs> nice move, Samsung, uh, putting the NDA expiration on the day of the launch of the Apple Vision Pro. Uh, that is an interesting thing. Not a whole lot of surprises here. Reviewers praise the hardware. 
Uh, most like the new de- new design. It's not that big of a change, but they have the flat edges. A lot of people praise that. Uh, also getting praise for a brighter screen, better battery life, faster performance, and even the camera, which was already great, seems to have even improved more, especially for telephoto. The promised seven years of upgrades of your software got high praise as well. Reaction to the AI features seems to be mixed, though. A lot of people praising some, but not all of those. And pointing out that a lot of those features are coming to the Galaxy S23 anyway, so you wouldn't need to upgrade if you own last year's Galaxy S. Overall, though, positive reviews for Samsung's flagship phone, which everyone says is very expensive, but in general, if you needed these features, considered worth the price if you could afford it. Amazon reported ad sales rose 27% on the year, and its AWS cloud division rose 13% on the year. Amazon earnings overall beat expectations, and revenue rose 14%. Amazon forecasts first quarter sales will be between 8% and 13%. Now, while AWS revenue rose, it has slowed down from last year at this time. Ahead of its earnings, Amazon announced a chatbot assistant for shopping it calls Rufus. Rufus. Oh, so Alexa has a friend now. That's cool. Meet Rufus. All right. Let's talk about TikTok. All right. So after Universal Music Group, uh, known as UMG, and TikTok failed to reach an agreement on licensing music from UMG artists on the app, some creators are singing the blues, or I guess they can't really sing the blues because they don't have any music left. In fact, some creators say that alternative versions of the official songs might be the only way to salvage what was already a carefully curated video that now has music stripped and now doesn't make sense unless they pull the post altogether. UMG and other labels have built marketing strategies around getting songs to go viral with the TikTok algorithm. Uh, But artists of those songs have also complained that that strategy doesn't always benefit them as much as they had hoped. Younger users see TikTok as a way to discover their next favorite song. I mean, even some older users see it as a way to discover their next favorite song uh, and build out your playlist. So right now, UMG is losing out on that exposure. TikTok told Wired in an email that current changes only impact music from UMG and confirm that videos with previously licensed music will not be pulled down, but they will be muted until another deal is closed. And then hopefully, if they close it soon, they would be unmuted. But TikTok could also take steps to remove songs in the Universal Music Publishing Group catalog, which is a little wider and would increase the number of impacted artists. They're not saying they're going to do that, but that's something people have speculated like, oh, it could be a leverage tactic. Yeah, so licensed music from UMG artists gone from TikTok for now, but it is still unclear what's going to happen to unofficial remixes and mashups as the catalog is, for now, wiped from the platform. Viral sounds on TikTok, sometimes warped versions of an original song type stuff, vocals sometimes sped up. Some of those sounds remain on the platform, uh, you know, as of yesterday. They might not for very much longer, um, depending on, you know, what is actually getting scrubbed. Now, Eileen, losing music from somebody as popular as Taylor Swift could be seen as a potential win for maybe a smaller artist to gain traction on TikTok. You know, you need a song, you know, let's do something fun. But is TikTok the place to hedge that bet? And as a creator, what do you do? Yeah. I mean, I've been thinking about this a lot. I'm on TikTok every day. I have an account. I'm there it is, face of E. And uh like luckily I haven't really been affected because the artists that I usually profile in my small niche, my K-pop community, but the artists of BTS, they were not affected. So most of my stuff is up there and uh, uh, coincidentally I had a Halloween video that had the Monster Mash gone. So I just decided to replace it with WAP. Um, because they asked me to replace the song. I'm like, okay, bye. Yeah. Which, yeah. Which, you know, which, which, they're, they're very which similar. Swap? The W O P. W O P. That's an yeah. important question. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, the one that everybody WAP. was doing the Got latest it. TikTok mashup with. Um, not the other, not the Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B song. But anyways, my point. And to your question, I do think smaller artists can win through this because we're we have regular habits. We are using the app to discover music. We are using the app to create. Um, the sad part is that you want to be able to create with as many things in your arsenal as possible. Uh, so there are creators that are affected. 
that have, you know, edits or they just want to celebrate uh, their favorite artists, which is really sad because it's just the way TikTok is being used to me. I love it there. And I love learning information. I love people celebrating their fan, their art, their creativity in general. And it's just been a really great place uh, to find your uh, community. But yeah, music creators, uh, I hope the indie artists can make a big win on this and and be profiled and, you know, launch their own careers even more so than some of them already were. Well, in in true TikTok form, uh, many creators have tried to bank on the fact that a lot of uh, their previous videos are now muted because there was music behind uh, behind that that they no longer can play. In fact, we have an example. Universal, <laughs> my boy, what's going on? Can we uh, figure this little situation out? You know what I'm saying? Because you got me looking a little crazy right now. You go to my page and half of it is. <laughs> this guy's like, great. <laughs> no sound, half of it, muted, gone. <laughs> I didn't realize that uh, <laughs> you guys control so much music. Sincerely from Adrian, uh, let's let's work a little deal out. You know what I'm saying with TikTok and. <laughs> so so this creator, you know, he does some lip sync in his car, and one of the uh, videos I saw recently muted was he was singing "How to Save a Life," uh, but I forget the the artist. But you know that song "How to Save." A Life. Anyways, he was just like, and the 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 words, you know, he's translated the lyrics, and it's just muted. <laughs> literally i watched it i'm like i feel so bad for this guy you know and he got millions of views on it but he's just a small sample of all the other cre creators make tons of really cool edits um and you know uh to the beats of their favorite songs and people love them and those are muted and I mean, now they're replacing them ironically with comedic sounds yeah which is really funny too which is you know i mean shout out to the creators uh, you know i think a lot of people are sort of like I don't know, there was a song playing behind you, just like choose another song. Is it that big of a deal? No, some of these videos, I mean, are, you know, hours, days, you know, in yes. the making. And, yeah. and you know, everything is timed very, you know, specifically, whether you like this stuff or not, um, it is it is super time and creative intensive. Yeah. And as and we I, said, oh, oh, sorry, as we said early in the week, this is a battle in public to try to get everyone to pressure the other side to give. They will come to an agreement and then all those all of those muted videos will be turned back on. And I'm curious what happens to the ones that got where they did replace it when that happens. Yeah. Well, I think the creators are just going to re-upload their videos with yeah, the yeah, probably. right songs. They have it saved. Hopefully they have it saved. Like that was the whole thing on, you know, online days leading. It's like save your videos, make sure, you know, you have them backed up. Otherwise, if you replace your song, then yeah. you have to do all that work over again. And hopefully this is a learning lesson real fast. Um, future for going forward, if you don't own the content, you have to be cognizant of how, when, and where you use it. The only content that you know for sure is going to work is your content. Your so you have to be careful with mm -hmm. music. You got to be careful with people stitching videos. You got to be careful with all that stuff because you never know how these businesses work. Yeah. Word to the wise. Exactly. Uh, that's, and Eileen, that's one of the reasons you haven't been as affected is a lot of your stuff is just you talking, you know, instead of instead mm -hmm. of having the music behind it all the time. Yeah. And I use like atmospheric lo-fi beats yeah, instead, yeah. you know, and yeah, that that all flew. So, yeah, I'm yep. I'm, I'm lucky. All right. Big day for Apple, of course. Uh, but before we get to the Apple Vision Pro, a few interesting tidbits came out of Apple's Q4 earnings report. Don't worry, this isn't just going to be, you know, a list of EBITDA and other acronyms none of us understand. Uh, this is stuff that kind of illustrates how things are going for Apple. Uh, services revenue, that's Apple Music, Apple TV+, Plus, Apple Health, anything you subscribe to, anything that's content, not hardware, rose 11%. It is Easily the second biggest revenue generator for Apple behind the iPhone. It's about a third of the iPhone's revenue and more than double any other category. Uh, so it is on track. It is not replacing the iPhone revenue at the, any stretch right now, but it is on track. And, and it is expected to grow 11% next quarter as well. Sales rose in every region of the world for Apple except China, where it fell 13%. But keep in mind, Apple's the top selling iPhone or phone maker in China it's the Chinese market that's down. It's not just Apple. So that's not just an Apple problem. It's a problem for Apple, but not one that's them falling while everyone else is rising. 
If you're wondering what the status is on Apple's patent dispute with Massimo over the blood oxygen sensor, you know, the one that's on the Apple Watch or no longer on the Apple Watch, uh, CEO Tim Cook told CNBC, we're focused on appeal. There's a lot of reasons to buy the watch, even without the blood oxygen sensor. So at this point, still indicating they have no interest in negotiating over that. Uh, a couple other notes here. CFO Luca Maestri noted that the EU app store markets account for 7% of Apple's global app store revenue. In other words, don't expect third-party apps and app stores to have too much effect on our bottom line. So throw in a little shade on the controversy there. And then Tim Cook mentioned that the company will share details of its ongoing work in artificial intelligence later this year. He used the word artificial intelligence, and he said they will share details later this year. Uh, which may sound underwhelming if you don't follow this closely, but previous statements about AI from Cook have been even more vague, uh, sometimes not even using the word AI or saying they don't like to use the word AI. So uh, kind of significant that he's like definitely going to talk about it later this year. Everybody expects that to be WWDC uh, when they talk about the various operating systems and how these smart generative models might be worked into that. Uh, Terrence, any any overall impressions uh, from what Apple was saying out of this report? Um, nothing necessarily overall, but of course, we're going to get into it in the next segment. Um, I'm curious as to how Apple is going to categorize, air quotes, the Vision Pro. Is it going to be an other category? Is it going to be a wearables category? I'm curious to see, especially if it does well or not so good, according to Apple's projections, how they're going to categorize the Vision Pro as far as earnings and things of that nature. I mean, I would think that Apple would fold it into overall wearables. And if the Vision Pro does well, saying our wearables category better than ever, you know, which is the watch, the Vision Pro. I mean, the Vision Pro as a wearable, you have to wear it. So, I mean, what else, what other category would it be in unless it was in some other AI category that has yet to be determined? I, I, I see what you're saying there, and it probably would be smart of them to do that because uh, other products is the name of that category. And it's like you said, it's the watch, it's the AirPods. Uh, and if you're wanting to hide sales numbers, that's a great place to do it, right? Just kind of stick it in there with the other stuff, make that category go up. So you can be like, ooh, other products took took a big jump without having to admit what the what the sales are. I don't think they will, though. I, I think they will give Apple Vision Pro its own spatial computing line, okay. just like they give the iPhone a line, they give iPad a line, uh, and they give Macs their their own line. I, I think they, they will know it's going to be small now, but we want it to look small so that when it gets big, because they are betting it's going to get big, it looks even bigger later on. But I mean, how long did it take before Apple um, did that with the iPad line specifically? Didn't do it at first. I, I thought it was. I thought it was already broken. Always broken out. Am I remembering that wrong? I don't know. Um, huh. I thought it was. It, it was sort of like the you know other bets type thing for mm. some time before you know it. It became a obvious cash cow for the company. I, I think I agree with Tom. I think it's going to be its own separate lanes, specifically because Apple was intent on saying this is not this meaning the Apple Vision Pro is not a VR headset. Don't call it VR. They were telling developers, don't put VR, XR, and I think another acronym mm -hmm. um, in your design. I think they're building out a whole new swim lane, so to speak, for this type of device. So under whatever they call it, it could be the, you know, the Vision Pro line, then they could have an actual VR line of, of products as well. So I think they are going the revolutionary route when it comes to uh, this um, Vision Pro to basically create it's a new way of, of documenting and categorizing their products. I think it's going to be something completely different. Terrence, are you, are you swayed? One well, no, you can mention the new swim lane. Just don't put the Vision Pro in the water. That's all. Please don't. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not until it gets, you know, the, 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 swim. the Vision Ultra. <laughs> <laughs> the, what? IPV4, whatever it is. You yeah, know, the Vision like, Scuba. Oh, just in case you go into the shower wearing your Vision Pro, you're fine. <laughs> that would make the a good Ultra scuba can go in the water, so it'll be the Vision Ultra. Yeah, no, Ultra makes sense. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, swim lane is what just what we call Sarah in the ocean. That's <laughs> yeah. If I only were a better swimmer, 
<laughs> uh, all right, real quickly, folks, a uh, reminder that uh, Roger has revolutionized our top five series. Uh, if you've been watching it, youtube.com slash daily tech news show, uh, we streamlined it. You know, that's the thing these days. These tech companies are all cutting costs and, and getting efficient. And that's what we did. Uh, we brought it down to 60 seconds. And honestly, that sounds like, oh, so you're not doing as much. I feel like there's even more in there somehow, the way we're doing this. So uh, this week, I am counting down the top five Apple Vision secrets. These are things that you may or may not know, but I'm guessing probably don't know uh, about the Apple Vision Pro. So go catch that right now at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, DTNS Picks on Instagram, and YouTube.com slash Daily Tech News Show. All right, you're probably wondering why we've gathered you all here today. <laughs> the Apple Vision Pro is now on sale in the U.S. and even got the traditional line of people at certain Apple stores uh, in some locations. CEO Tim Cook made an appearance, greeted the crowd at the Fifth Avenue Apple Store in New York City, one of the big ones. Walmart, Nike, Vanguard, Stryker, Bloomberg, SAP, all experimenting using the headset for customers and workers um, and have, have made that public. And as we mentioned on the show yesterday, there are now more than 600 native apps for the Vision Pro, including a Star Trek one built for spatial computing and a YouTube rapper called Juno from independent developer Christian Selig. He is the same guy who did Apollo for Reddit before Reddit raised its API rates and essentially shut down Apollo. So what's fun about this is it's sort of, a, you know, just, a, just a, a, a playground for developers. We've all been following the launch. So, Nika, what do you think? Um... It's hard to say, really. Normally, you know me, I'm a I'm an Apple enthusiast, an Apple snob, if you if you will. Um, and I think this launch, um, it hasn't really swayed me so much. And I hate to say that because I was so pro Vision Pro uh, when it was first announced. So um, I think this particular product, for me at least, is going to have to grow on me. All right. Well, I mean, I think I think that's very fair. I think a lot of people, even if, you know, Apple fans, I consider myself one as well. Um, you know, I, I want to make sure that this is great before I tell other people this is great. Terrence, uh, where do you fall on this? Um, I'm interested to see. It's interesting to see how prior to the Vision Pro came out, you know, everybody and everybody, meaning tech journalists, you know, websites, things of that nature not necessarily try to pick it apart, but every little piece of information, it was like, oh, you know, the, the eyeballs don't look right when you, you know, whatever the, that passive screen or whatever you want to call it in the front and, you know, um, all these other things. But it seems like at the launch, the tide has kind of turned a little bit to where the excitement, I don't know if that's just an Apple day thing, or is that a Vision Pro specific thing to where the tide is kind of turning to where Oh, it's great. I've seen some of the videos. I've seen some of the reviews. They say this is mind blowing. Yeah, you may get a little vertigo after, you know, certain, you know, a certain a, a elongated amount of time on it. But everybody seems to be um, impressed by what the, the first impressions of the Vision Pro. Um, my concern or I'm interested to see is what the people, the consumers, the people who are using, buying the Vision Pro are going to do with the Vision Pro versus what Apple has kind of put on the Vision Pro as far as what it's supposed to be used for. We've heard spatial computing. Nika mentioned this is not VR, um, but I Apple's kind of thrown some entertainment things in there. I'm curious to see how Apple says this is what the Vision Pro is, this is what it does versus it gets in people's hands and people say, oh, this is great for Netflix or, oh, this is great for NBA courtside seats, you know, and then ver once that takes off, I'm interested to see if Apple kind of changes its tune as what the Vision Pro is or will they kind of double down and kind of point people in the right direction? Well, I think part of the, I don't know, Apple marketing um, challenge that they have right now is, you know, Apple saying, you know, it's not VR, it's spatial computing. Okay, mm -hmm. great. 
But like, what are you touting as like the coolest experience? And what do people who have been lucky enough to try this out already say is the coolest experience? It's watching movies in 3D. That is VR. Mm -hmm. That's VR. I mean, you're not going to watch a movie and try to, you know, do other things. Well, I guess you you could, um, but that's not that's not what uh, the Vision Pro is for. So, yeah, I think Apple has a little bit of a challenge on its hands, uh, figuring out how to make sure that the Vision Pro is seen as um, a productivity device. VR, sure, but so many other things. But like the only thing that people seem to say so far is that the VR experience is pretty great and everything else is, mm, well, hard, you know, a little bit of a harder sell. And it'd be definitely interesting to see if Apple sticks to their guns or do they say, all right, you're, you got me, you got me VR. <laughs> and I, and I really think it, the, where the contrast is for previous Apple products, iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, they had a directive as to what they're for, what they do. Now, granted, users can't have learned to use them in different ways, but they pretty much had a dedicated purpose. With the Vision Pro, it doesn't seem to have a dedicated purpose. So I think it's one of those products that as time goes on, uh, like Terrence mentioned, where people say, Apple says this is what it's for and people find their own use cases for it. I think it's one of those things that's going to have to really grow on people. And once it gets out in the quote unquote real world, even though it's virtual, so to speak, spatial computing, I'm sorry. Um, it's one of those things where the longer people have it in their hands, they can find ways that this is useful to them as an individual, then which I think will lead to broader usage, you know, for the whole um, you know, the overall usage of, of this device. Eileen, what do you think? Uh, <laughs> as, as, you, as you wait for <laughs> USPS to, you well, know, drop yeah. something off any minute now. So, so I have purposely refrained apart from a few Apple propaganda videos that they made. I have purposely refrained from watching any reviews. I've seen thumbnails. I've seen things in passing. I'm actually very interested in the cooking. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that yeah, Joanna there Stern was a, that. Joanna Stern, did, but I didn't watch it. So I'm trying to do my best come as a clean an, slate an unfiltered lens of yeah. a consumer that's going to get this box and is going to put it on and then kind of go through the motions of like setting it up and then like oh what are the suggested apps and then the next step is then I'm going to do that very thing and like what are the apps that you know you there's no YouTube apps of the Juno you know all of those things and kind of progress that way so I'm trying my best to be unfiltered or uh and uh but unbiased. kind of walk in unbiased, kind of walk in with open eyes in this. Uh, and then I'll watch everyone's reviews. So, <laughs> but I'll also hopefully have my own uh, opinion. Uh, I'm hopeful. I am skeptical at best, but I'm very hopeful that there will be a use case. Um, I like hearing the, you know, thought about, well, what are the people really going to use it for? And let them tell apple what it's actually going to be useful for even though apple is saying this is what it is but guess yeah, what yeah. this is what it will be you know and, right. that and that's gonna... and that's pretty monumental for me mm -hmm. because this might be that one piece of equipment to where the people say this is what it is and then does apple kind of cater or do they again do they double down and say no 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 we're going to reach out to Slack and we're going to reach out to all these other things mm -hmm. to prove that this is what we said it was. Or is Apple going to say, you know what? You're right. Let's I've, forget it. I've, Let's I think do it. my answer is both. Okay. Uh, so, so very quietly, Apple has been touting the fact that, and and, and Sarah mentioned this, all these big companies, uh, Vanguard, Walmart, SAP are corporate clients of the Apple vision pro while in public, they tout like, hey, yeah, you, you, this is pretty much meant for sitting down. And when you're sitting down, everybody thinks gaming. We think it's great for entertainment. I think they are going to make sure they sell enough of these to keep it going to corporate. And that's where they're pushing Slack and productivity. And then they're going to push the entertainment aspect until 
people decide whether that's the thing it's great for or there's something else it's great for, then they'll jump on the something else and the next version will be lighter and maybe two versions down the road, it'll be like, this one's great for standing up and doing exercise. And now we've brought Apple Fitness to the Apple Vision Pro. And so the corporate clients fund this until they can get the technology light enough and easy enough for it to do all the things that consumers want it to do. That's a good point. At least that's where I think it's going. Oh, um, and a quick aside. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the guy that did the YouTube rapper Juno, I didn't know he was the same guy who did guy the Apollo right? for Reddit. Is that yeah. dude a glutton for punishment? What is he doing? He also he was he was like, by the way, the YouTube API is no slouch. Like this is this isn't any easier. But you know, <laughs> I just figured, why not? Let's try it. So, jeez, I guess yeah. you yeah. got some talent. You just like forget. It. I'm just going to do it until it breaks. And if it That's breaks, a unique I'll mindset. Just move on to something else <laughs> for sure. Uh, all right. Well, before we get out of here, let's check in with Len Peralta, who has been busy illustrating today's show. Len. What have you drawn on this momentous day? It's Vision Pro Day. Yes. So uh, I'm like Eileen. I didn't really see a whole lot of stuff on it, but I did see the current commercial that's running. I don't know <laughs> if anybody else has seen the current commercial, um, but at the very end of the commercial, this guy sticks his tongue out. I don't uh -huh. know. Have you have you seen this? Uh -huh. um, and this is what I drew. This is your spokesperson for the Vision Pro. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I watched the commercial before I drew this and I'm like, it's just so weird. He says, mama, dada is steady scaring me. It is, he, he sticks his tongue out. He looks, it just is really strange. So I know I'm among, I'm the, the voice of dissent here as far as what this is. It's, I think it's going to keep a lot of, the price is going to keep obviously a lot of people out of the, the teen market, right? They're not going to be buying this. Um, but I just thought that was just so strange. Um, <laughs> it's just, it just, I, that was like the, 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 the button at the end of that commercial. And I was like, really, that's how you're going to end this commercial is this guy sticking his tongue. I want to remind you, it doesn't block your mouth. That's why. <laughs> oh, there you go. There and that's what I was going to ask. Can the camera see your tongue? Because if they can, that's a whole different direction. <laughs> so if you, uh, if you want to celebrate Vision Pro Day, you can go to my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Len. You can back me at the DTNS lover level and you get this immediately. Or you can go the old fashioned way. Go to the online store, purchase it for yourself, hang it up. Uh, you know, hopefully it won't look as, as, as odd as this guy does um, when you get your Vision Pro. But um, but there you go. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, Nika Monford, so glad to have you on the show, one half of the Snob OS podcast. Where can people keep up with your work? You can find me at Tech Savvy Diva everywhere. And Terrence Gaines, the other half of Snob OS. What about you? Yeah, sure. You can find me all over the internet at Brother Tech. That's B-R-O-T-H-A-T-E-C-H. -E Again, me and Nika are Snob OS Cast, where we talk all things Apple and then some. You can find us at snoboscast.com. I also am one third of the group that we call the Tech John, where we talk all things tech from a black perspective. And you can find us at thetechjohn.com. Excellent. Eileen Rivera, one half of <laughs> our upcoming <laughs> show called Apple Vision Show. Um, and I'm the other half. Uh, but let folks know where they can keep up with your, with your work, um, including your TikTok. Yeah, everybody, if you're into K-pop, K-dramas, or K-beauty, come find me at Face of E on TikTok. That's also an Instagram account that I have. Uh, but yeah, happy to be a co-host to AppleVisionShow.com, which officially launches on Monday. Whee! Please subscribe. Yay. We will definitely be talking about the Vision Pro and our initial uh, response to that, because I'm going to get it, and then I'm going to hand it off to Sarah. <laughs> And on Monday, we we'll both have thoughts. And Terrence and Nika, hopefully you will be on our show soon. Um, Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> if you go half with me on the Vision Pro, we can talk. All right. Oh, fair, okay. fair, fair, fair. Okay, All right. Fair. You know, look, what's fair. in it for me, says Terrence. Yeah. Ship the Vision <laughs> Pro to Atlanta. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, it's like a timeshare. Yeah. <laughs> a community, a community we'll Vision Pro, if you will. We'll work it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, man, I'm telling you, like the perfect way uh, to, to get the 360 degree view on Apple would be uh, finish your week with Snob OS Cast. Uh, enjoy Allison Sheridan's Nasilla Cast on Sunday to get the geeky perspective. Uh, and then Apple Vision Show on Monday. It's it's the best way to stay informed. Indeed. Uh, you the are Apple a trifecta. 
Exactly. The apple trifecta. I like that. Uh, if you're a patron of this show, you're not done yet. We got more fun stuff for you. Stick around for the extended show. Good day, Internet. It's Friday quiz time uh, and Roger outdid himself. Time to test your Apple fan cred. Do you have mm. the right answers about less notable Apple products? We're going to oh, do that boy. in just a few seconds. It's going to be fun. You know, you're going to love it. Just a reminder, everybody, we do the show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC. And find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Speaking of Allison Sheridan, she will be joining us on Monday. We hope you all have a real nice weekend. Talk to you soon. This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show were created by the following people. Host, producer, and writer, Tom Merritt. Host, producer, and writer, Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker, Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and co-host, Rob Dunwood. Video producer and Twitch producer, Joe Kuntz. Technical producer, Anthony Lemos. Spanish language host, writer, and producer, Dan Campos. Science correspondent, Dr. Nikki Ackermans. Social media producer and moderator, Zoe Detterding. Our mods, Beatmaster, W. Scott S. One, BioCow, Captain Kipper, Steve Guadarrama, Paul Reese, Matthew J. Stevens, aka gadget virtuoso and jd galloway mod and video hosting by dan christensen music and art provided by martin bell dan luters mustafa a acast and len peralta live art performed by len peralta acast ad support from tatiana matias patreon support from tom mcneil contributors for this week's shows include chris ashley scott johnson justin robert young nika monford and terrence gaines our guests this week were charlotte henry and eileen rivera and thanks to all the patrons who make the show possible this show is part of the frog pants network get more at frogpants.com diamond club hopes you have enjoyed this program <laughs>